Hello there. Good morning to you. Or afternoon. It is afternoon, isn't it? Sorry about that. If you don't know, this is Shane from Shane's Reviews, and I hope that you are having a great day today. Today, <laughs> we're going to talk about something a little bit different. There's a particular video that is like Voldemort, it shall not be named, it shall not be referenced. But there's an author that wrote said book, and that author is Chuck Polinuk. And Chuck Polinuk has come out with a book called Consider This. And it kind of got my attention because it's supposed to be a story about writing. And, or excuse me, not a story about writing. It's supposed to be a book about writing. Uh, and there are a few particular gems that are thrown in there. Uh, but, yet again, Chuck has delivered something in a particular packaging, and there's other things that are inside of it that should probably be decompressed or looked at. So, this one, I'm pretty sure won't be quite so inflammatory. Uh, so, I'm going to leave it to the editors on if they enable comments on this or not. Do not give hate to the editors, please. It's just, I really have worked diligently on getting all the negative out so I want to keep it positive uh, anyway so the the book doesn't really have anything overly inflammatory in it at all uh, it's just a, a collection of stories uh, but also there's a collection of stories there for a specific reason um, much like Stephen King's book on writing uh, which I have oh well it's yeah right there um, it's a interesting way to express how they go about their way of writing or the transformations that have occurred during life that has allowed them to get to their inner voice. Um, and it, I know it's meant to be a way to help people, but if you're looking for a book that's going to give you on this page write this on this page write this that's not this book so don't do it <laughs> right but if you are curious about writing and you're more of a narrated voice individual being that you know you don't just see things you look at it and as you're experiencing it you have this underlying voice in your head that sounds really bad whenever I say it that way but some people are built that way believe it or not but it's it's not a bad thing it's not like the voices are bad mean or saying awful things it's that they're usually intaking everything that's happening around them and then figuring out how that would apply to whatever so if you're one of those kinds of people this is really going to be a book for you and the reason why I say that is he shares some of the experiences that he's had on going to writer workshops he shares some of the experience he's had at book signings he's also uh, shared some stories that he's collected over the years from other authors like himself where it's like just marathon really hard to get through book signing type things or different events that have happened because of the particular stylizations of which he uses Chuck has never been one of those nice, polite type of individuals whenever he writes. And I appreciate the rawness and the grittiness. Um, I really, really, really do. And some of the stories that he's wrote over the years, they're in your face, they're offensive, but there's always a point. There's always a, a lesson that you can find in there if you don't stretch but you analyze and you look at it so Chuck's one of those people where it's almost like watching a kid's movie as a kid and then going back and watching the kid's movie as an adult and you think to yourself my god how did my parents sit next to me while I watched this there's so much honoriness in here but it's easy to forget as a parent sometimes that your child doesn't have the same life experience and understanding that you do so the movie production studios slide those jokes in for the parents and it's completely missed by the kids for the most part some of them get it but 
you know, some of them don't. And that's that's kind of like Chuck. He's there. There's this story that you read, but then there's the story underneath, and it doesn't take a whole lot to get to that either. Um, <laughs> The book that shall not be named, for example, he even makes fun of it in this book because he, <laughs> I enjoyed what he said about it. It's all the explanation I ever needed. And if you read this, then you'll, you'll get it. You'll see. And I wasn't far based. I wasn't really off on what I was saying either, which is phenomenal because I, I was really worried that Chuck was having problems with anger. And that he was going off the deep end. But no, after reading after reading this, I, I see where he was coming from. And I accept it. I, I think that um, a lot of people have misinterpreted what he was trying to say. And that's funny. Because a lot of those people, <laughs> their comments, I still have them. And it's glorious. Anyway, so, alright, moving on along. But he also, like, he talks about Fight Club, he talks about all these other things, and he talks about the life experience of not necessarily saying this, but in some worlds, being a yes person or saying yes to things is a very important attribute. And it's also very important to know when to say no. And that's a balance a lot of people have problems with because if they turn on the yes switch, then they end up so stressed out because they've done this for this person or this for this person, that eventually they lose themselves and they forget what's most important to them because they've made everybody else the most important thing in their lives. Might sound like I know a little bit too, too close to the nail, maybe, yeah. But on the same token, I, I have developed over the years the ability to say no. I've got too much on my plate. I'm sorry, I just can't do this right now. Now, if you look me up, down the road, yes, we'll do that. But right now, I simply can't. Uh, and that's that's just that's part of business, and it's also part of your personal life to try to stay healthy because you've got to have time for you. And I struggle doing that kind of a thing. But anyway, that's my own problem, not yours. So I'll 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 keep that down here. Yep, 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 yep. yep. But it does. The book does have a couple of gems in it, like the differences in between how to write versus how to write so you know it's the same thing that i've complained about or talked about or even acclaimed about from different authors on the types of details that they use a uh, perfect example last video that i did was a review from hg wells uh, the first men on the moon and so it's kind of like the hg wells book that i recently read and did a review on and in that, I was kind of heralding some of the ideas, concepts, and details that were put in to that book, specifically because they added to the story instead of taking away from the story. So an example that Chuck gives that I'm going to paraphrase and turn into my own is that, like, instead of saying it's 9, 12 a.m. and my character needs to be at work at 9, 30 a.m. It's a 30 minute drive. So instead of doing stuff like that, why not equate it to other things that are more relatable but not lock that kind of a detail in? There's an overall exercise that he wants that person that's reading the book to do if they are trying to become an author or even just a writer to make them a stronger writer. And he wants to block your ability to do particular things in the literature of which you're writing. And I agree. Because any time that I've had something with video or in computers where I'm limited on the resources that I have, it brings out that creative side and allows me to learn how to do something a little bit different. Now, sometimes having the proper tool for the job is a great concept and idea and something I try to live by because I believe in the one and done scenario. I go out, I fix a problem one time, and then it's done, and I don't go back to it. And the reason why I do that is because even though it might cost a little bit more upfront to do that for a customer, it's the better way of doing it because now they're good, they're solid, and the next time they have a problem, guess who they call? Instead of the person that has to go out there 30 times, they only, you know, they'll come back to me. And that that's kept me running for a very, very long time, and will keep me going for a long time. 
Uh, is it for everybody? No. <laughs> Some people just are built that way. And I accept that, but it's okay. But the point is, is he wants to put those limitations in to help that person that's writing to get past particular hurdles, teach them how to express things without necessarily putting in a mundane detail, but making the detail that's mundane acceptable, exciting, but keeps the person in the story. He also talks about the differences of big voice versus little voice, and he gives several demonstrations of that before he points out, hey, I just did that again. How did that look? You know, that kind of a thing. So, I mean, he points out in exercise what he's doing. So, overall, not inside of my lane, this book. It's really not. But every once in a while, I find a little gem. And there's some books that are in there where he very clearly says that if you want to keep your thought process as genuine to yourself as it always has been, don't read these books because they'll expand your mind and make you question what you think you know. And you're probably going to not like what you get to. And I appreciate that kind of a warning. And, you know, considering how raw he is, I expect also that he's a very honest and genuine individual. Um, if I ever had the chance, I'd love to shake the man's hand because he has, over the years, provided plenty of material for me to read and digest and then also go back and re-examine the way that I have looked at things in the past. So in that way, I, I accept him as an intellectual equal and, you know, somewhat of a literary hero for multiple reasons besides, um, well, just besides. They're my personal reasons. <laughs> no. No, I'm not going. Do you see that? Go ahead to put the lock back on your cage. That's better. So overall, is it worth your time, efforts, and energies? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, even if you're not going to be an author, even if writing is not your forte, if you enjoy reading and you like stories, there's anecdotes that he's put in this book that they're worth they're worth a read. <laughs> they really are. Uh, especially whenever he's talking about his time in Paris. That was probably one of my favorite ones because it looked one way, but in true Chuck style, it's another. Uh, <laughs> yes, fun. But here's my question to you guys and gals. Even if you're not a writer, you've probably picked up a, a book, a how-to book of some sort over the years. And what was your favorite one and why? That's what I would like to know. So leave it down there in the comment section and we'll check that out. It's pretty neat to see. Also, this is the most interesting comment that we have found this week. Thank you so much for that. It really is much appreciated. And you, if you have made it this far and you're not subscribed, would you consider doing a little tap dance on the subscribe button? Just just a little squeak squeak. That's, that's all we need. Just squeak a little, give it some tenderness, just a little and that, that will actually help us out quite a bit. So thank you much. Thank you so much for your time. It's very much appreciated. I'm not sure which one of these videos over here that you're going to check out. However, if you do check one of those out, I will see you uh, in the next video. Bye. Peace.